If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn to the book of Matthew, the chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11. We're going to jump into something that I feel like is going to be a blessing to your life. And, and as you're turning, as you're getting your device out and you're finding this scripture, listen, this is not an ordinary day. The reason why I say that is because today is Pastor Danny's birthday. Pastor Danny's birthday is today. And I want you to show him some love right now in the comments section. I want you to wish him a happy birthday. Tell him how much uh, you love and appreciate our pastor on his special day. And, and it's a double whammy because not only is it our pastor's birthday, it's also the birthday of our church. We have been here for 43 years. God has been good. If there was a clap button, I would tell him to hit the clap button because God has been good for 43 years and our pastor has led the way each of those years along with his uh, his lovely wife, Miss Norma. And so we want you to make sure that if you haven't already, show him some love on his special day. Show them some love for being incredible shepherds for so many years here at Pathway of Life Church. I know that you'll do that, and we are just grateful for them. So show them a lot of love on this special, special day. But I want us to jump right into what God has for us this morning. Matthew, the chapter uh, chapter 11, I want to start reading from verse 28. And it's a, it's a familiar verse to probably to most of you. And it says this in verse 28. It says, Come to me, all you who are weary... And burden, and I will give you rest. If there's ever scripture, if there's ever a scripture that that defines the season that we are living in, it is that scripture. We are burdened, and we need some rest. And then it continues on. It says, "Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy." And my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. For a few moments, I want to talk to you today on a sermon titled, The Benefit of a Burden. The Benefit of a Burden. You know, we have a lot of songs through the years that talk about burdens. And and I grew up, I've, I've, I've said it many times, I grew up, told this story many times about growing up in a small church, not even far from this building. And it was a small, spirit-filled Baptist church that was predominantly white. But we had one lady, Sister Ethel, who had two kids, and I still are still dear to my heart. I'm still connected with them. Had two daughters around my age, one a little older and one a little younger, named Tammy, and the youngest was named Kelly. There was a a white boy, Kelly, and then there was an African-American girl, Kelly. And it was incredible to see what God did in our little church. Diversity started in my life way back in the 80s when I was a child to see uh, just what God God was doing in our little church and what God was doing through Sister, Sister Ethel and, and Tammy and Kelly, what an, an impression they made on my life at a young age. And, and I remember we would sing a song, and, and many of you know this song maybe if you've been in church for any length of time. There's a song we'd sing, glory, glory, hallelujah. And we would, you know, we, we'd be clapping on the, the one and the three. If you don't know what the one and the three is, it's like this, glory, glory, We'd like that. Hallelujah, since I laid. And Sister Ethel would be on the two and four, and she'd be glory, glory. And so it was like an echo of clapping. And I thought, man, Sister Ethel don't even know how to clap on beat, only to find out later that Sister Ethel was clapping on beat the right way the whole time. And so I would, I would be, we would all be singing glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. And then we'd go into another song that says, leave it there, leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. We would have all kinds of church around that song. And I got a little older, and we would still sing the songs, and, and, and there is so much great truth in those songs. But as I got a little older, I realized something, that some burdens in our life, they're not meant to lay down. Now, I know that messes with our churchy theology. 
But some burdens in our life are connected to the assignment of our life. Some burdens that we carry is what helps us find the calling that God has placed on our life. You know how it is. You know know that you have a calling on your life, but sometimes you have to realize that as you're trying to, have you ever tried to lay some stuff down and then you find yourself picking it back up, not because you are not leaving it with God, but because there's something connected to your future that that burden is going to play a part in. Now, I want you to lean in a little bit today because we're going to talk about the benefits of a burden. We're going to talk about that the burden that you may be carrying today, there's a benefit to it. It's a benefit that's going to get you to the next level of your life. It's a benefit that that is connected to seeing something because there are there are people that are watching that you have been praying for your unsaved children or your unsaved husband or your unsaved wife and that's a burden to you but you know and I know that you can't lay that burden down because you've got to stand in the gap for God to touch their heart and to change their life you try to lay it down but you have to pick it back up because it's connected to something that is that is connected to a calling that God has on your life there are benefits of a burden and in this book of Matthew Jesus he's given us hope on how to deal with burdens and and Jesus never says that we will not have burdens he just says that while you're dealing with burdens I'm going to be with you I don't know it's it seems like a small message but I just need to just encourage someone that whatever burden you're carrying today Jesus is right there with you you don't have to carry it alone you can have confidence that even though where it may feel like he is so far away from you you can have confidence that Jesus is right there in with you with as you are carrying the burden of your life he is with you and then all in all this encouragement There's something that he says. He goes, now, he says something very interesting. He says, now, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. It it lets us know that, and I said this before, but it lets us know that our burden is not our destiny, but it is our university. So there's something about the burden that we're carrying that we have to learn from. Because what we're learning from the burden that we are carrying is a benefit that's going to thrust us into the future of our life. Burdens have a purpose. It's not just there to irritate you. It's not there just to keep you up at night. It's not there just to give you something else you need to pray for. But burdens have a purpose and they carry a purpose in our life a purpose that's designed to activate a greater cause in you burdens are indeed they're hard to carry but there are benefits that they we have to extract them from because your your calling and your purpose uh, in life is connected to the burdens uh, educators and teachers and a shout out to all the teachers that had to endure COVID-19 and and having to teach kids not from a classroom but from their computer and 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 a shout out to all the moms and the dads that had to play teacher and had to be teacher as we were sheltered in in place but we know that that teachers develop a talent for teaching because they have a burden to see kids be the best they can be in their life and they find their calling because they realize that their calling is when their talents and their burdens collide But burdens come with the price, y'all. It comes with the price because they they, they get they get heavy and it's hard to carry. And and even though that burden hurts you, you you know there's a benefit connected to it, so you have to pick it back up and you you have to carry it. It doesn't line up with the song that we sang earlier, but but even though your family says that you need to give up on him or her, they're, they're always going to be out in the world. They're always going to be addicted. They're always going to be strung out. But you can't lay that burden down. You've got to carry it because you know there's a benefit that you've got to find from that burden. And even though people say you're crazy, you know that they're, you're like, people tell me that I'm crazy because I'm believing God for some big things. And you go, well, maybe I should lay down this burden and just move on to something else. But you realize that there's something, there's a benefit to the burden that you're trying to lay down. So you pick it back up. 
There's people that say they have business ideas and they go, ah, I'm always going to have to work for someone and I might as well just lay this dream and this burden down. But you find your way of picking it back up. And you're not really sure if the burden can't let go of you or if you can't let go of it. It's just you're just connected to the burden. And, and you know that there's a, a benefit to the burden. In the Old Testament, there's a story about a, about a man named Nehemiah who shows how a burden leads to a blessing. And he finds the benefit of a burden by rebuilding the walls of a city. And he went through these phases and these chapters of this, this burden and this load that he was carrying. And he lived in Persia, but, but he was a cupbearer for the king, and, but he was a Jew. And he heard that Jerusalem, his hometown, was under attack. And he inquired about the condition of his hometown. And he hears that the city gates, they lie in ruins. And, and his heart breaks. And at that moment, his burden is born. And he realizes that I've got to find a benefit from this burden. And he discovers his burden to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. And through six chapters, he, you see the, the action. It's almost like a movie script that just begins to, to, to play out. And it shows how he took his burden and he began to find the benefit. He couldn't lay it down. He had to pick it up and he finds the benefits in chapter 1. He prays for his burden. If you read in verse 4 of chapter 1 of Nehemiah, it says, As soon as I heard these words, what were the words? As soon as he heard that the walls lay in ruin. He, as soon as he heard, hears the words, he sits down and he weeps and he mourns for days. And, and then it says that, And I continued fasting and praying before God of heaven. As soon as he heard the words, he prayed. He prayed. The very first thing that he did when he encountered his burden, the very first thing he realized is for me to find the benefit of this burden, I've got to spend some time and pray. As soon as he heard, he began to pray. What words can I ask you today are you hearing that you need to pray about? Because we have a burden and oftentimes we will have this burden in our life and we will find ourselves doing, we, we will find ourselves doing everything else. We'll Google about the burden. We'll read books about the burden and all those things are fine and necessary. But we'll do all of these things and the very last thing that we do is we will actually pray about the burden. The Bible says that Nehemiah prayed first. The first thing that he did, the burden that you're carrying today, I don't know if you've covered it in prayer, but it needs to be the first thing that you do. It needs to be the continual thing that you do because you can't carry your burden without prayer. If the burden you are carrying is, is, happens to be injustice, and there's a lot of people that are carrying this burden. We all are carrying this burden of injustice. Can I tell you what you've got to do? My brother, my sister, speaking to myself, we've got to cover it in prayer. We've got to cover it in prayer. The only way to find the benefit of finding the solution to injustice is we got to pray. If the burden, burden you are carrying is for the, your lost kids, you can't lecture them. Uh, you, can't, you can't make them feel guilty. Guilt is not a strategy. You have to make sure that you cover it in prayer. You have to make sure that you're praying for them. Prayer is the key to maintaining the weight of your burden. Prayer is the key to maintaining the weight of your burdens. These burdens, they get heavy. And prayer is the benefit to the burden you're carrying. And your burden, it's going to collapse on you. It will, it will take you over if it isn't supported and propped up with prayer. In the day where, where praying is the last option, Nehemiah prayed first. He prayed First, he realized, he said, listen, my plan to rebuild the walls, isn't going to, I'm not going to find the benefit of this burden if I don't cover it in prayer. He prays for his burden. Then in chapter 2, in chapter 2, it says, Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer. In verse 11, 
to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by, listen to this, granting him favor in the presence of this man. Chapter 2, he finds favor for his burden. He finds favor for his burden. Did you know that the burden you're carrying, the burden that, you, that, that is weighing heavy on you, that you're trying to find the benefit from, the burden you are carrying could be someone else's responsibility to resource. It could be someone else's responsibility to bring favor to your life. You know the burden you, you are carrying? God could have someone already set up, already set up, to, to help resource the burden. To the man that wants to start his own business and you're wrestling, I can't get a loan, I can't do this. Did you know it doesn't matter that if you can just continue to carry the burden, there could be a benefit of favor that is trying to come to your life. And you realize there is someone that God has appointed somewhere that is going to cross your path one day and just gonna be right there to resource and bring favor to your life. The king that he was serving, Nehemiah was serving the king, and he realized that Nehemiah's countenance was down. He says, what's wrong? He says, my hometown has been destroyed, and people I know are now dead, and the ones that aren't dead have nothing left. And the king says four words, what do you want? The king was placed to resource your, the burden. The king was in, in, in the place to resource Nehemiah's burden. And, and, and resources is not always money, but, but resources could be time. Resources could be advice. Resources could be encouragement. And there's someone that while you're carrying the burden and you can't lay it down, you pick it up, but you're carrying it and it's getting heavy, there's someone that God wants to put in your path to show favor to your burden. And I declare 2020, we're at the halfway point of 2020, and I'm declaring that this is going to be a season to where God is going to show favor. It's been a rough first half of 2020. We all can agree on that. But I'm declaring over our church, I'm declaring over your life, everyone watching right now, everyone that's going to watch later, I'm declaring that the last half of 2020 is going to be a season of favor and blessing over your life. I declare it. It's a burden you're carrying in the first half of 2020, but I declare that resources and favor is coming your way. And then in chapter 3, it says that he assigns people to his burden. He assigns people. He realizes that the burden was not meant for him to work on alone. That there are people that are there that want to run beside you to help you pick up the burden. To help you. There's a benefit of people. Listen, you can't do life without people. You can't do life. You need to be really, really careful careful that you never write off people in your life because when you write them off in one season it could be the same person that God is wanting to use in another season you need to make sure yeah, we all have personalities and we all have different things that we don't click with but I just encourage you I have seen that in my life to where maybe there was somebody in my life at a certain point that I maybe felt like I need to kind of pull away from but because I didn't completely cut them off I remember years later that same person would came through my life and they were a great encouragement to me we need a team you need a team and I need a team and so he assigns people to his to his burden and he begins to tell in chapter 3 he begins to in verse 6 he, he starts laying out these 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 different positions and these people that stood that, that that stepped up and there was some that was required to lay the beams and to set the doors and its bolts and and put the bars in place and and talked about people that were responsible for repairing the wall and, and people that were responsible. And everybody was working as a team. It was goldsmiths and it was merchants and it was priests and it was rulers and it was Levites and it was homeowners and all these people came together to help carry the burden. All these people came together to find the benefit of the burden that Nehemiah was carrying. And then it says this, out of all the people, it says there was perfumers and I thought I'm thinking of a construction site the last thing that I think is needed for a construction site is perfume 
And honestly, if I worked at a construction site, I wouldn't want to be the one that was chosen to be the perfumer. And I thought, I sat on that for a moment. I was like, God, why would perfume be necessary? Perfume was necessary. It played a, a lot of roles in the Bible. Of course, it was to, to, to take care of those that have died. It was an embalming fragrance that they would use. And, and it was even medicinal. It would use for medicine. It, was, it, showed, it, it, it played different roles in the Bible. But in this case, it was, it was there to purify the air. And, and the Lord just, just began to lay in my heart that sometimes burdens... Sometimes burdens just doesn't always smell good. It, it doesn't always smell good. Sometimes there can be a stench connected to a burden. It, 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 and the, the stench can be just too much to, to bear. It, it can be too much to, to deal with. And the sickness that, that you're dealing with, it, it smells bad. And, 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 and you think, well, but there's people that will be the perfumer of your life. To, to, to clean the air because you feel so heavy with the sickness and you feel so heavy, but you, you've got to have someone that can, that can change the atmosphere, that can change the air, and someone that even if you have cancer, that will come your way and say, he was wounded for my transgressions and, and he was bruised for my iniquities, that by his stripes you are healed. You need a team. You need people that are going to help when life just becomes so stench, so smelly, and the burden seems so much where you can't come up for clear and fresh air. You need someone in justice right now. Smells really bad, but you need someone that's going to come in and read Proverbs 28, 5 to you that says, evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand it completely. You need someone while you're dealing with the burden that can be a perfumer of your life, that can help you come up for fresh air because you can't do it by yourself the unsaved loved one you need someone when you feel like you're carrying this burden and it's too hard to bear you need someone to come by you that can spray a little perfume your way and say listen I've been in your shoes I remember having to pray for my son who was addicted for 20 years but he now is serving the Lord you need someone to come and be an encouragement to you while you are while you are carrying your burden you need someone to bring the benefit to your burden. That's why you've got to sometimes, you've got to answer the call to someone else's burden. There's people here, don't be quiet. There's someone around you that needs you to be the perfumer, to help you come up for air. In chapter four, and I'm wrapping up here, he fights for his burden. He fights for his burden. Anytime you get serious about your burden, someone is going to fight you every time. Every time. Haters are going to hate. And, and Nehemiah had a hater named Sanballat. And, and, and the Bible talks about in chapter 4 how, how, how Sanballat comes against him. And, and, and he, he heard they were rebuilding the walls and he exploded in anger. And in the company of his Samaritan cronies in the military, he let loose. He says, what are you miserable Jews doing? Do you think they can get everything back to normal uh, overnight? Haters, just haters make building stones out of make-believe. And then at his side, he had Tobiah, the Ammonite, who jumped in. And he said, yeah, that's right. I'm reading the word. That's right. What do you think they're building? Why, if a fox climbed that wall, it would fall to pieces under its weight. Just negativity, haters. And then Nehemiah, guess what he does in verse 4? Nehemiah prayed. Nehemiah prayed. He says, oh, listen to us, dear God. We're so despised. Boomerang their ridicule on their heads. Have their enemies cart them off with trophies, as trophies to a land of no return. Don't forgive their iniquity, but wipe away their sin. They've insulted the builders. Haters will come in your life. And as you're carrying your burden, and as you're trying to find the benefit of your burden, you can't be moved by people that are going to hate on you in a season that you're trying to carry your burden. You can't be moved by 
the haters. And it's amazing he had this sidekick. I call it, he was like a sarcastic sidekick. You don't, you don't need people that are going to come in. And, and Nehemiah had this way. He didn't argue with them. He didn't get online and debate with them. He, he simply prayed. He simply prayed that God would give him the wisdom to how to deal with the haters. And you're going to have to sometimes fight for your burden. Chapter 5, he fights for the people's burden. It talks about how uh, he, was, he was carrying his burden and the people were living their lives in ruins. And, and even though he was trying to carry his burden to build the walls, he had to also attend to the burden of the people. Just, just sometimes when you're moving forward, I've, I've noticed that sometimes when I feel like I can't carry anything else, God will send somebody else that needs my attention. God will send somebody else that needs my response to something. And it's like that. And you think, I have no power to help somebody in their mess when I'm carrying my own mess. Let me tell you, God is famous for using people that are at their breaking point. I'm telling you, the Bible is full of people in the Bible. There are people in the Bible that God uses in their, at their breaking point. David runs into a cave called Adullam. He runs away from everybody. He's being chased, trying to be killed. And the Bible says that 300 men show up in a cave that David was assigned to. And you have to realize that sometimes while you're carrying your burden, sometimes you, as you're carrying your burden, you've got to help carry someone else's burden. Chapter 6, this is my last point. He stays at his post for his burden. It's, it's the most popular part of this story. It says that when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arab and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall, it's Nehemiah talking, and that there were no more breaks in it, even though I hadn't yet installed the gate, Sanballat and Geshem sent his message. And he says, hey, 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 come and meet with us in the valley of Ono. And he's, Nehemiah says, I know that they are scheming to hurt me, so I sent messengers back with this. And this is the most quotable part of his story. It says, I'm doing a great work, and I can't come down. There's always going to be people that's, that's going to try to pull you down to the valley of oh no. And you're just simply going to have to say, oh no. <laughs> oh no, you ain't. Oh no, you ain't going to trick me. You, oh no, you ain't going to try to pull me down. I have come this far fighting for this burden. I have come this far seeing some benefits of this burden. I refuse to come down. I refuse to be pulled away from the thing that I know I've been called to. I know the song says, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I've laid burden down. I, I wonder if I could say glory, glory, hallelujah. Now that I've picked up my burden and I'm finding the benefit of it. <laughs> and throughout history there's many that decided and were better because they didn't lay down their burden. In a time like now we think of Martin Luther King Dr. King, I'm, I'm grateful he didn't lay down the burden. That, that we're fighting still today. Yeah, yeah, we're still fighting. But it was because of his willingness to refuse to lay that burden down. And to say, listen, I know this is a big burden, but I know there's a benefit. And here we are, 50 years, 60 years later. And yeah, we can say we're still fighting. Yeah, we are. But you know what? We refuse to lay it down because there's still a benefit to be found in the burden. I think of another man. We know him well. I think of Pastor Danny Wegman. I'm thankful that I have a pastor. You have a pastor that just decided, listen, sometimes being a pastor of a church in in. Cert in Dallas, Texas, in the city of Dallas, sometimes just being a pastor can be a great burden, but I'm grateful that he didn't lay it down. I'm thankful that he's for 43 years, he's tried to find, and he has found the benefit of the
the burden. I'm, I'm, I'm one, I have reaped the benefit of the burden that he decided to carry. From 1977 when he answered the call to pastor this church. We're here today and we celebrate him today. It's not because it's just his birth, just because it's his birthday, not just because it's our church's birthday, but we celebrate him that we are surrounded by good men, a great man and good people that said, listen, God, I know sometimes I want to lay the burden down, but I'm thankful that I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep holding on the burden. I'm going to st- keep carrying the burden because I know there's a benefit connected to it. So God, I pray for every person that's watching today. And God, that maybe they feel this in their heart. I, didn't, I don't even think that it took them very long to maybe identify with that burden that they've been carrying. Yeah, sometimes we, we put it at the back of our mind, maybe for seasons of our life. But we know we can't lay it down because our destiny is connected to it. We can't go to the next level until we find out the benefit of the burden at this level. So I pray, Father, for strength. I pray for Nehemiah's strength over every person watching. I pray, God, that you're going to just strengthen them, bless them. And God, I pray that all of these chapters, all of these, uh, I like to call it a movie script, God, all these movie scripts that we read through this book of Nehemiah, I pray, Father, that we will take something from it. God, let us return back to prayer. Let us return back to prayer throughout this entire book It simply says, Nehemiah prayed. So God, I pray a spirit of prayer will just rise in each each of us today. I pray that, God, that we will be free in our hearts and that prayer will begin to release it. We thank you, Father, for the burden that people are carrying. Let them not grow weary in carrying it. Because, God, in due season, we're going to reap. We're going to see the benefits. We're going to see the benefit of the burden. And we give you the glory and the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I, I, I want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. Don't carry alone. Don't, don't carry the burden by yourself. We're, we're, here to, we're here to pray with you, to strengthen you, to encourage you. So just know that you're not alone and that God has you. If you need us for anything, we'll put the information on the screen. If you need us for anything, please reach out. To, we're your pastors. We're here to serve you to help you as you continue to find the benefit of your burden. Let's worship the Lord. Give myself away I give myself away so you can use me I give myself
life is not my own to you i belong i give myself i give myself to you